Sir John A. McDonald, Prince Andrew High School, Tallahassee Community School. I know of three schools in my province that have changed their names. One of them is mine. And it got me thinking, what's in a name anyway? This is Kay and Explains, renaming schools. You might have heard that schools across Canada have been ditching their old names in favor of new ones. For example, Sir John A. Macdonald. The first Prime Minister of Canada, Macdonald has been celebrated as an important national figure, but he was also very involved in the residential school system. Tapisa Killabook, an Inuk advocate in Calgary, says that John A. Macdonald's name might be celebrated by some Canadians, but that for Indigenous members in the community, that name doesn't actually resonate with us. It doesn't resonate, it doesn't create a, a healthy relationship between us and the school. Indigenous educator Sarah May Chitty says changing a name can show that the school is aware of its problematic history. Reconciliation, according to Chitty, means acknowledging those harms and doing meaningful actions to repair them. The repair work requires all community members, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, to be a part of the process. So how have these name changes come about? In many cases, people have raised their voices and demanded change. One kid who raised her voice is Amy Dorsey. Back in 2020, when Amy was in grade eight, she found out about the troubling history of the namesake of one of the local schools in her neighborhood. Turns out the man Dan Knott School was named after wasn't just a former mayor of Edmonton. His election was celebrated by the Ku Klux Klan, AKA the KKK, a racist hate group. Amy created a petition and it got almost 8,000 signatures. In April, 2022, the school was given a new name, the name that we've chosen for the new school is Kisei Watsun, and uh, that uh, reflects one of our seven teachings of kindness and the act of being kind. While this was a big win, the experience affected Amy's mental health. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of been like one of the worst experiences in my life. <laughs> she received a lot of hate and harassment from members of the public who didn't agree with the move to change the school's name. Like, I'm still hurting a lot from like everything that happened. So does she recommend kids get involved with this sort of activism? I don't know, this is a really hard question because I feel like if someone had the supports that they need to like do that and like they're like in an okay place to deal with the backlash, then I think that they should. But like, I know that I wasn't. To piece a killer book's advice for young activists, try and focus on the positive impact that they're making for themselves, making for making like the positive impact that they're making for their ancestors and the positive impact that they're making for their like their kinship, their their community. All right. But why do people get so upset and even angry when the issue of removing a name and replacing it with a new one comes up? I think people don't like change. <laughs> Canada is a great country for a lot of different reasons, but we sort of pretend like a lot of things didn't happen. The experts we spoke to said that confronting the negative parts of history can be challenging for some people. People are forced to recognize that maybe what they've known their whole lives isn't as true as they thought it was. So I think we need to remember that Renaming things is is all is how history works. History isn't written in stone. It's constantly changing and evolving as we understand new information about the past. At my school, that meant the public could suggest names. Names like City of Lakes and Woodlawn made it onto the final list, which then the community could vote on. Woodlawn High won. Other name suggestions like Poggers High School and Kermit the Frog School did not make it on the list. In Edmonton, Kisewa Siwin was chosen to replace Dan Knott in consultation with an Indigenous naming committee and community engagement sessions. Even after the name is chosen and announced, the work only just begins. Signs, logos, school mascots, uniforms all need to be changed, and that can take time. Many kids, including myself, will be starting off the school year with a brand new name this fall. 
Some schools across Canada are reconsidering their names right now. Is your school one of them? Email us at cbckidsnews at cbc.ca. All right, that's it for Can Explains. For CBC Kids News, I'm Isabel McNeil.